I'm going to start, uh, oh, that's loud, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to start uh, this afternoon, and I'm going to give just a little bit of a background, and I'm going to read what my mother had written several years ago to kind of start us off thinking about our ancestry, just a little bit of information, and I think it'll be a good background for us then as people start to tell stories about our family. So, and she called this Laura's Legacy. The year was 1871. Robert S. Wilson, with his wife and three sons, migrated by wagon train from Horse Cove, Kentucky, to Texas. The trend of the time was to go west where the farmland was fertile and open for settlement. The Wilsons bought land in Cook County, Texas, in 1874. John William Wilson was a baby when his family migrated to Texas. He grew up in the two-story frame house that Robert Wilson bought on the farm he purchased near Era, Texas. During John's early manhood, he was introduced to a young woman from Ludeen, Tennessee. He was visiting a neighbor of the Wilsons. Her name was Lily Cecilia McCarroll. He fell in love with her and later went to Tennessee and brought her back as his wife. They were a handsome couple. She was petite, weighing 88 pounds. She had black hair and blue eyes. John was a large man and blonde. The John Wilsons bought a farm in Cook County. They ordered a house from Sears Roebuck and Company. They added to the house as their family grew. The children's bedrooms were upstairs. In those days, the boys' bedrooms were on one side and the girls on the other. There was a solid wall between them with each side having its own stairway. Laura Thomas was the oldest, was, I'm sorry, Laura Thomas was the first of eight children born to John Wilson. Laura was born prematurely and at birth she weighed one and one half pounds. Her first bed was her father's shoebox. Her father commented that he could completely cover her face and head with his three fingers. She had what was then called a heart murmur and underdeveloped kidneys. She outgrew her problems without the medical advantage of the preemies of today. Laura had a difficult childhood. Her mother was very frail and was confined to her bed most of the time. Consequently, Laura tended younger siblings, cooked clean, did laundry, and worked in the field as needed. She stood on a box at a very young age to do the laundry in a wash tub using a washboard. She commented on how heavy the wet bed sheets were. John Wilson was a very religious man and a strict disciplinarian. His children were not allowed to have game cards in the house. However, marbles were acceptable because he was the champion marble player among the men in the community. Laura, as a child, took pleasure in growing flowers and especially loved the wild blue bonnets around her house. She also liked the livestock and chickens her family raised. She had a real hunger for learning. She loved books, but they were very scarce. She stated that when she was sick one summer with a kidney disease, she yearned for books to read, but there was only one child's book in the house. She read it over and over just to have something to read. She corresponded with her aunts who were teaching school in other towns. She kept them current on family matters. Laura's church was her social life. They had musicals, luncheons, or picnics that were called dinner on the ground and Sunday school parties. When Laura completed school in the area where she lived, she wanted desperately to further her education. Her school had nine grades and schools of higher learning were in other towns. Her father did not think it proper for a single girl to live away from home. Also, she was needed badly at home. She soon reached the age permitted for dating. She and a boyfriend, Johnny Allison, became very fond of each other. Johnny asked her father for her hand in marriage, but he refused to allow them to marry because there was another Wilson-Allison marriage in the family. It is ironic that years later, Johnny's son and Laura's daughter fell in love and married. Laura started dating Carl Walker, whom she had met years earlier when the Walkers lived on a neighboring farm. 
Laura's dating in that day was to ride to church with or sit in church with a boy. They could also visit in her home. Laura was swept off her feet by Carl. They were opposites, and it is said that opposites attract. He was handsome, rode fine horses, and had a carriage to ride in. He had an outgoing personality. She was quiet and reserved. He could play musical instruments and sing. She was lacking in musical talents. He wore fancy clothes, always a fine hat and nice shoes. She made do with what she had. He was a regular in church attendance. Her father liked that. Carl occasionally spent weekends in the Wilson home. He would entertain Laura's brothers. They could be heard laughing at all hours from their bedroom side. The Wilson family loved him. John was delighted to grant permission for him and Laura to be married. Laura Thomas Wilson and Carl Newton Walker were married September 3, 1912. They were such an attractive couple. He was of medium build with dark hair and beautiful blue eyes. She was small with a tiny waist, golden brown, naturally curly hair, a peaches and cream fair complexion and dainty features. Laura, War Laura Walker bore her first child in 1913, starting a new Walker generation. It was the same year her mother died in childbirth, ending that Wilson generation. Who would imagine that a one and one half pound baby would grow up to one day bear and rear 14 healthy children. <laughs> yeah, you did good. You wrote it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yay, Mom. <laughs>